Over the years, Google has made things easier to achieve your business's performance goals with automations and campaigns and their smart bidding structure. This is the case in many campaign types like Performance Max. So how does it work? You tell Google what target ROAS or target CPA you want to hit and the system tries to hit it. But the big question is what target ROAS or what target CPA should you have? I mean, what target should you list that actually makes sense for your business to drive maximum profit? In this video, I'm going to give you a simple process to follow to find out what your bid target should be using the Google Ads Performance Planner. And if you're looking to drive even more performance for your business, I have something that I want to give you, and that's my seven day online marketing jumpstart PDF. You can get it at scottredgate.com slash jumpstart. If you're looking for simple tips that can get your business results, this is a great document for you. It's completely free. It's quick. It's simple bullets. And after you complete the steps outlined in this doc, not only will your website have a solid foundation to generate more leads or more revenue, but you'll have a lot more confidence that you can manage your own digital marketing campaigns without hiring an agency. All right, let's dive in. Hey friends, my name is Scott Redgate, and if you're new to this channel, I'm passionate about helping small businesses make more and spend less and show you that you have what it takes to manage your own online marketing campaigns. Today, we're going to run through a simple framework to figure out what your optimal performance target and spend level should be in your Google Ads campaign. And the good news is, is that this works for campaign types like search, display, shopping, and performance max. Let's jump into the slides. So we're gonna identify what your sweet spot ROAS or even target CPA and spend level is using the Google Ads Performance Planner. A little context before we get started, over the past decade, Google Ads or Google AdWords at the time was mostly a platform that relied on manual bids, where advertisers would input manual bids for the keywords that they wanted to show for. Fast forward to today, you can still do manual bids, but the system is more along the lines of automation in what they call their smart bidding structure, where you input your performance target and Google attempts to achieve that performance target using all of the signals and all of the data that they've collected on the users out there. And that is especially the case in the heavily automated Performance Max campaign where there's two very important levers that we have to control in order to get the results that we want. The first one is budget. So how much are you willing to spend on a particular campaign? And the other one is the efficiency target, which for a lot of us, that's the target ROAS or target return on ad spend or target CPA or target cost per acquisition that we're attempting to achieve. So in Performance Max especially, those are the two of the most important levers that we can control to get the results that we want. And when you're inside campaigns like Performance Max, you'll see it in the bidding settings here, and you have the ability to set a target return on ad spend, and on this screen it's listed as optional, and you simply input your target here. But the question is, what number should you input? What number actually makes sense for your business to drive the most profit possible? Now, before we run through the performance planner, it's important to note that the steps that I'm about to outline require a campaign that has been in existence for a little while. So you have a little data that you've already collected in terms of spend and revenue for the campaign that we're looking to optimize. So to get to the performance planner, you simply hover your mouse in Google Ads underneath the tools and settings, and then there's the planning option right here, and underneath planning, you'll see the performance planner, so you just click there. And so that's how you can find the performance planner inside of Google Ads, and I just wanna say one thing, the performance planner is an estimate tool, meaning the numbers that Google is using inside of the performance planner are projections based on your previous campaign's history. So we'll review some different performance targets that Google estimates, but they are not set in stone. So after you make adjustments to the target ROAS or the target CPA uh, with using the steps that we're about to outline, make sure you monitor the results closely to see if the results that you are seeing are close to what the performance planner was estimating. There's always a chance that they could be better, that they could be close to it, or they might be a little worse. So just make sure that you're monitoring the performance and adjust accordingly. 
And then this is what you're greeted with. So what campaign type would you like to estimate the performance on? So right now they have search, display, shopping, and performance max is actually a recent addition. Google uh, previously did not have that included in here, but now you do have the option to select performance max. Once you click the campaign, you get to create the plan. And so it asks you for what forecast period would you like to have? You can select any date range that you would like. The default when I was running through it was January 1st through March 31st of 2023, but you can select any date range in the future. And then you can select what metric is important to you. So I selected conversion value. And then for this target option right here, which they do list as optional, I have selected no target. It doesn't really make a difference for the steps that we're about to outline. So I select the forecast period, the metric that is important to us, and then we're gonna select create plan. So full disclosure, I am not an accountant and I am not an economist, but there are a couple of basic principles and a couple of accounting terms that we're gonna go over in this video and we're gonna try to do it in the simplest way possible. But we're gonna start with an economics principle called the law of diminishing return. The law of diminishing return states that as an investment in a particular area increases, the rate of profit from that increase can't go up if other variables stay constant. So in other words, this means the more you invest and push forward past this point of diminishing return, there are no additional gains. The law of diminishing return is true across many aspects of life, and it's especially true inside of Google Ads. And so we're going to identify what that point of diminishing return is for your business so that you don't go past it and waste money. Now, once you've selected create plan inside of performance max and selected the campaign that you're looking to estimate performance on, you're greeted with a screen like this. Now, I've blurred out some of the numbers here, but as you can see, what it lists is it lists your spend, estimated spend, and conversion value across many different points. So you'll see the circle right here, which is a little bit darker, which is saying this is your existing setting. So this is the conversion value that you're getting at this spend level. And then you can simply go across and hover your mouse over different parts of the line to see, all right, if I increase my spend to this level, here's the estimated conversion value that Google is saying I could achieve. So one thing that I like to do in this forecast section is toggle between conversion value and the other options that they have listed. So in this particular example, I toggled it to conversion value over spend, which is synonymous with ROAS or return on ad spend. And then you can hover your mouse over the different points to see what is that estimated performance at different spend levels. If I'm going to increase my spend, what is that estimated performance or ROAS that I could see? And so what you can do is as you hover your mouse over different points of this performance planner graph, you can look at the different spend and conversion value estimates that Google is estimating for you. So in this example, when you hover your mouse over a data point, you may see something like this. Spend of $100, conversion value of $1,000, and then conversion value divided by spend is equal to 10. And that's another name for ROAS, or return on ad spend, that we can use as we move along in this process. So as I mentioned, you hover your mouse over different points of the graph to have that pop-up that we just looked at appear, and then we're simply going to plot that out into a spreadsheet, whether that's Google Sheets, or Microsoft Excel, we're simply going to record the different spend and revenue estimates along with the ROAS that Google has for us in that graph. So this is what it looks like if you start recording the different points along the graph. So I might start out with the point that is the existing setting, so the darker circle that we were looking at. And so you record the spend and the revenue for that point, and then the ROAS, which is simply revenue divided by spend. So as we saw before, 10 dollars in spend for hundred dollars in revenue equals a 10.0 ROAS. And then as you move up the graph or as you move to the right of the graph, you simply record other spend levels and revenue levels. So it might look like $15 for 140 with the ROAS is 9 point of 9.3. And as you'll, you'll see, and this is the case in almost every single account, every single campaign, the more you spend the performance or this ROAS number actually gets worse. And so the goal is not to maximize just 
how much revenue we could bring in. The goal is to maximize how much profit we can bring in. That's where we're gonna look at another term, and this is COS, or cost of sale, which is simply the inverse of return on ad spend. So cost of sale is just spend divided by revenue. So I'm gonna add another column into this spreadsheet, and this is the exact same thing that we were looking at with just one additional column, which is cost of sale. So instead of doing revenue divided by spend to give us the ROAS, I'm simply gonna take the spend divided by the revenue to give us the cost of sale. All right, so I promise this is one of the final accounting terms that we will have to know, and that is gross profit. So gross profit is your revenue minus your cost of goods sold, and that gives you gross profit. Okay, so let's break this down. Let's say that you sell shoes, and let's say you sell shoes on your website, and when you do, you make $100 when you sell a pair of shoes. But obviously, the, the, you had to pay something for those shoes. Those shoes were not free for your business to purchase or to make and then sell to the customer. So let's say that your costs associated with those shoes are $60. So you were able to sell the shoes for $100, but the cost that you incurred from the shoes is $60. Well, you take the 100 minus the 60, and that gives you a gross profit of $40. So we're looking to find the gross profit percentage, which is simply the gross profit divided by the revenue. And now that we have the gross profit from the previous slide, all we have to do is divide that by the revenue. So in the previous example, that would be the $40 gross profit divided by the $100 in revenue, and that gives us a gross profit percentage of 40%. So here is our North Star now that we've defined cost of sale and return on ad spend and gross profit and gross profit percentage. Your cost of sale percentage cannot be greater than your gross profit percentage. And the reason for this is if that happens, you would be losing money. You would be spending more money on advertising than you actually make from the sale of that item. So I would even take it as far as saying that your incremental cost of sale percentage should not be greater than your gross profit percentage. So that's a lot of information. Let's run through an example. So to hop from $10 in spend to $15 in spend, at least according to the performance planner, our estimated revenue is going to go from $100 to $140. And so what we saw before is the return on ad spend or our efficiency is actually getting worse as you spend more. And you'll notice here, if you do the math behind it, the incremental spend to go from 10 to $15, we spent $5 more. And then what's the incremental revenue? You can take the 140 minus the 100 to give you the incremental revenue of $40. So to go from this level right here to this level right here, we spent $5 more and we only made $40 more in revenue. So you can do this across the different points that you selected on the performance planner graph where you plot out the incremental spend and you plot out the incremental revenue. So with this process, we're simply looking at different points of the performance planner graph, documenting what the spend and revenue estimates are for those levels, inputting what the ROAS is that Google is saying that we will hit, and then we're doing the quick math for spend divided by revenue to identify the cost of sale. And now we're just adding in one additional step to this process where we're identifying what the incremental spend and incremental revenue is to hop to each of these different levels. And then we're calculating an incremental ROAS and incremental cost of sale based on those differences. So just a reminder, incremental ROAS, you simply take the incremental revenue divided by incremental spend, and for incremental cost of sale, you, it's the inverse. You simply take incremental spend divided by incremental revenue to give you that percentage. Now, what we had said is that the incremental cost of sale cannot be greater than the gross profit percentage. And reason for that is if you do, you would actually be losing money to hop from one level to the next. And so now that we're at this point, we have the different spend levels plotted out, the different revenue levels plotted out, what the efficiency, the ROAS and the cost of sale is for that spend and revenue level. And we also plotted out the incremental spend and incremental revenue and incremental efficiency levels. 
what we need to do is simply identify what row or what level of spend can we go to where the cost of sale percentage or the incremental cost of sale percentage in this example is not greater than the gross profit percentage. The example that we've been using, the gross profit percentage was 40%. And so we are willing to go up to the point where the incremental cost of sale does not go above 40%. So as you'll see here in this example, that is this row right here, which is $20 for $175 in revenue because the incremental cost of sale is only 14.29%. Whereas if we were go to go up to the next level, which would be this one right here, the incremental cost of sale is 50%, which is, which is greater than our gross profit percentage. So we would be losing money to go from this spend level of $20 to the $25 spend level based on the revenue estimates that the performance planner has for us. So one thing to keep in mind is the performance planner tool is an estimate tool, meaning that these are projections that Google has based on account data or based on campaign data that you already have. So these numbers are not set in stone, but it does give us a great framework to be able to use and apply to be able to find what is that target ROAS or what is that target CPA that we should really be aiming for. And then we can make that adjustment and then monitor to see if the results that we get are similar to what Google has inside of the performance planner. Hey, maybe they'll be better for you. That would be awesome. I hope those insights were helpful for you. And if you're looking for more money saving marketing advice, visit scottredgate.com and subscribe to this channel to watch more videos. Thank you so much for watching this video. Take care.